Hey guys, and welcome to another GarageBand tutorial. Um, in the previous two tutorials, I showed you how to um, do techniques with the electronic and the acoustic drums to build custom kits and to have your drums on their own separate tracks so you can EQ and add effects like compression etc to individual drums and how to mix and match kits to build your own custom kits and some other tricks like that, right? Okay, let me show you something else. Um, we can use custom drum samples if we want to by using the audio unit sampler which is included free in um, the operating system, OS X, right? Uh, as far as I know, the audio unit sampler has been included as part of OS X going back to Mavericks or maybe beyond that. So if you've got a recent um, copy of OS X on your Mac, you should have this audio unit sampler and we can use it to load custom drum samples, right? So here's where I left off in the previous tutorial. Uh, we've got a custom mixed kit, Liverpool kit doing the kick drum, a layered snare with the Neo Soul and Motown Revisited uh, snares layered and SoCal kit doing the hats and uh, the four on the floor kit here doing a tom lick all together with the drums mixed individually it sounds like this okay so let's use a custom snare sample I'm going to mute the Motown Revisited snare track and we'll just go with this snare track here right which currently has got the Neo Soul drum kit on it with the note in here triggering the snare only from that kit to give us a Neo Soul snare. So we go to the smart controls, open up the plugin panel here and at the top we see the drum kit designer instrument in the instrument slot. This is providing the Neo Soul kit for our snare note to trigger that Neo Soul snare. Right? If we drop this instrument slot down at the top we see audio unit generators and audio unit instruments. Now in audio unit instruments I've got some third party um, instrument plugins installed here which you won't see but what you will see or should see in audio unit instruments is Apple, audio unit MIDI synth, audio unit sampler and the DLS music device. So we choose the audio unit sampler I'm going to go with mono because we're just loading up a snare sample, right? Um, so mono, boom. And there is the audio unit sampler, which you should have. It's included free as part of OS X, right? Now, what we do is this. We drop down show editor there. And if you see these parameter controls, then you just switch to key mapping there. Parameters, key mapping. And you'll see this is all yellowed out because all of the key mapping at all velocities from 0 to 127 velocity is all assigned to this sine wave sample. Right? Okay. And notice it's mapped across the whole keyboard. Right, okay. Now we can't remove this sine wave. If we select it, the minus here to, to remove it is greyed out. It's the only sound in this layer one. It can't be removed yet. We've got to add another sound in the layer before that can be removed, right? So we go to the plus button here, right? Plus. And then you've got to scroll to where you've got some samples on your hard drive. Now you kind of audition the samples as you choose them. So you must know what the samples sound like, where they are, and which one you want to load. That's the downside, but it is free. Okay. So I've got some old Spark samples here from the first Spark drum machine. So here's some snare drums, and I'm going to choose the. There is snare drum 01 with velocities 1 to 6. There's snare drum 02 with velocities 1 to 6, and the snare drum 3 with velocities 1 to 6. So I'm going to choose snare drum 3 with the loudest velocity. Again, I can't audition these, right? Open. And it's loaded that snare sample now into layer one. So now I can choose the sine wave and minus this minus button there will remove it. So now all we've got in layer one is the snare sample. Its velocity is from zero to one, two, seven, the entire range of velocities, right? Um, and there it is. now. It's loaded. Let's go back to our um, 
wait a minute, before we do that, there's one thing to note, we've loaded the sampler and it's mapped across all the keys. But notice that C4 key there is yellow. So when you load a sample, it its natural pitch is on C4 for some reason. And then down from there, you're playing the sample lower down the keys or higher up the keys. So it's on C4 in the sampler. So let's go into our MIDI notes here. <coughs> but there's a little bit of an oddity, which is that these these notes, to, to play the sample on its natural pitch of C4, these notes actually want to be on C3. There. Not C4. I don't know why there's that transpose difference. That's C4 and it's too high. So, C3. Okay. And there's the sample loaded. Let's hear it. Let's solo it. Okay, now it's cutting off the sample um, uh, with the length of the note. If I could bring these notes right out in length, it'll play the sample through longer. But we don't, we don't want to do that, right? We want to adjust the sampler so it'll play the sample all the way through. So now we go from key mapping to parameters. And to do that, we need to select the actual layer here, not the sample within the layer. Then we can switch to parameters. Then we've got all our parameters here, which includes um, a cutoff, and you, you click on one of these knobs and then slide from left to right to adjust the slider, right? We've got cutoff and resonance if we want to use a filter. We've got an LFO, but what we're looking for is the release time here. Let's slide that up to about uh, two seconds. Two seconds. And here is damn it. That should give the the release enough for the sample to play all the way through. Maybe a little bit longer release time. Two and a half seconds. There we go. Custom sample. Now I'll go back to my smart controls. Um, I want to... Give it a little bit of it's, it, it's retained. Notice it's retained all the controls from the from the previous instrument that was in there. It hasn't removed the EQ, and it hasn't changed the compression or anything, right? So let's EQ it. There you go, that'll do for the EQ. Um, now, I've got the fade drop quite high here, but it's still not that loud, the snare. So, I go back to my controls here, open the sampler, and we've got a volume, we can push that up a bit higher. Okay, and then we can use the fader more here. Maybe it's a little bit too high now. Let's slide it back a bit. It's still a little bit too high. Let's give it a little bit of echo for the snare. And there you have it, custom snare sample, right? And uh, I could blend it in with the Motown one again. But they're quite similar snares. So there you go, that's how you can use a custom snare sample. And if we go back to the editor, You've got, a, you've got a full envelope here. The delay time, by the way, here, when you click on these knobs, you slide from left to right to adjust right. The delay time is the delay that the sample will be triggered. Then you've got the envelope. Attack, hold, decay, sustain and release. There's an LFO, as I said. There's a filter you can bring in here. And you can layer samples as well by velocity. Right, just to show you that. I'll load up. This is snare drum 003 at the loudest velocity, 6. So I'll go back and load some more samples. Yep, here we go. So I've already loaded up that one, snare drum three at the loudest velocity of six. So I'm going to load up the velocity lower down of four, or maybe three, no, four. 
So I've got a lower velocity version of the sample and I'm going to load another one now. I'm going to load the lowest velocity. Snare drum 3, velocity 1. That'll be the gentlest hit version of the sample, right? So I've got three, and you can't, once you've loaded these, you can't organise their, their order, as far as I know. I can't see a way to do it. So there's the quietest hit sample, there's the medium hit sample, and there's the loudest hit sample. So with the loudest hit sample selected, I'm going to go to the velocity here. It's the loudest hit sample, so it wants to have the highest velocity, 127, but going from, let's say, 100. So from a velocity of 100 to 127, we get the loudest sample. Then the next loudest sample will have that go up to 99 from, say, 60. Come on, 60. So from a velocity of 60 to 99, we get this medium hit sample. Then from a velocity of 100 to 127, we get the loudest. And for the quietest sample, that goes from the lowest velocity of 0 to 59. Come on, 59. So the quietest sample hit will be triggered from with the velocity of anywhere from 0 to 59, medium sample from 60 to 99, and loudest hit sample from 100 to 127. And now if we go back into the notes here and have a listen, let's lower their velocity down below 60, and we should get the quietest sample now. Right? I'll raise the level up here a bit. But once we go above 60, it'll switch to a different sample. There, here it's got more beef in the body. Let's solo that and take the um, take that echo off. Okay, so we're below 60 and you hear the sample is thinner. Put the velocity above 60, it's now triggering the middle sample, which is fatter. It's got more body, you hear the more bottom end body in the sample. And then above 100, from 100 and above, it'll be the loudest sample. Yeah, so there's velocity layering. And if I put, let's put in some notes at different velocity. Lower velocity, medium velocity, loudest velocity. Let's hear those. So there's velocity sensitivity to switch samples by velocity, right? Um, so let's put that, that one back to about 106 and that one about the same. Right, there you go. Um, Built-in sampler, right? You can use custom samples. Soften that down a bit, so I'm going to bring in the filter and just soften it down a bit. I could probably have done that with the EQ, um, you know, on the actual track here, but. But you've got the ability to adjust that filter as well on the sampler itself. And you've got a tuning here. That tunes like all the samples in the layer. And you've got a pan. But that isn't going to work. You've got to use... You've got to use the pan here on the channel. Right. <coughs> yeah, so there you go. I, that's kind of useful, but it does mean that we can, it, you know, 
Okay, it's not, a, it's not a, like a mega sampler, but it does some pretty reasonable stuff. You can layer by velocity. There's more stuff if you go into the... Um, see that there, that little icon. This is your parameters and key mapping. That's performance parameters. I don't know. I haven't looked into this yet. But here we've got some other things, like where you can assign, you know, key velocity is assigned to the amplifier gain at the moment. So the less the velocity, the less loud the sample is triggered. But you've got other things you can assign here. I'm not getting into this, but if you want to investigate it and you understand a little bit about um, synthesis parameters or uh, parameters to to um, controls to parameters, you can get into trying these things out, right? Okay. But there you go. It's pretty cool, I think. It's completely free. It's included as it should be included as part of your OSX. And um, there you go, it's a way of using custom snare samples, or any other sample for your drums. Yeah. Okay, I hope that is useful.